Hey y'all, Dan from danwagner.co with a quick tutorial on how to use the code that highlights cells in column G based on selections in column A. So we can see the code in action right now as we're clicking parts which are in column A for our example bicycle shop. We're getting the corresponding SKU number highlighted over in column G and this works for multi-selects as well but it does not highlight cells if we select A1 or anything else somewhere on the sheet. We only want to highlight cells in column G when we have the part selected in column A. So let's talk about how exactly we built this, starting with where the code goes. We're going to take advantage of this worksheet underscore selection change event and this is a worksheet event, so the code exists here on Sheet 2 directly instead of being added inside its own module. We start by taking advantage of target.parent, where target is the range that we get for free passed in uh, with this function here, or excuse me, with this subroutine here called worksheet selection change. And target is always going to be the selected cells on the worksheet in question. So we get the worksheet by calling target.parent. The parent of a range is a worksheet, and so we assign that to worksheet lookups. I picked lookups because the sheet name is lookups. The next thing we do is apply a null background color, which is the Excel standard, to column G. And this is really important to do each time because if we didn't, each selection on column A would leave that particular cell in column G highlighted, and we don't want that. We only want to show a highlight when the selection is made in column A, and we only want to show the corresponding cell. So most of the action happens inside this if statement here. So first, uh, we're, we're going to be working with target, which again is the passed in selected range from the sheet. We check to see that the column is column A or column 1. And we also check to see that the row, which is the first row inside the target passed in range, is greater than 1. And I set these parameters because I don't really care to have um, cell G1 highlighted if cell A1 is highlighted because, again, these are headers. If in your case you want G1 to be highlighted when A1 is selected, you can simply get rid of this AND clause and say if target.column equals 1, then blah, blah, blah. So the next thing we do inside this if statement is identify the first row and the last row of the selected range. And we get the first row really easily by just calling target.row because dot .row gives you the first row inside the range. And we get the last row by counting all of the rows inside the uh, selected range and then adding that to the first row minus one. And this is important because uh, there is no shortcut for the last row inside a range. We need to use this uh, count method and add it to the first row minus one to get the absolute last row number, which uh, in this case is going to be eight based on this selection. Finally, we use a, a with worksheet lookups so we don't have to type worksheet lookups a bunch of times as we define our range here. We take advantage of the fact that we just calculated the first and last rows. Uh, so we define a new range using these two cells as our bookends. And then we call uh, dot interior dot color and we set it equal to this RGB value which happens to be yellow, right? So the red value is 255, the green value is 255, and the blue value is zero. And as a result, we get highlighting in column G. I hope this has been helpful. If you're interested in more tutorials, please sign up at danwagner.co for my newsletter. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, this code isn't working for you, please give me a shout. All my contact information is available at danwagner.co and from the link in this YouTube video description.